Welcome back to Brick Model Railroader on YouTube. My name is Glenn Holland, and I'm joined for the first time on, uh, and I guess in, in uh, his first Brick Model Railroader model uh, building debut is Aaron Burnett. Uh, here, here with me to talk about his uh, his awesome box car model. Uh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks for that uh, awesome introduction there, Glenn. Um, my name is Aaron Burnett. I um, I live in Central Florida. I've uh, been into Lego trains for about 20 years now. Um, I think I got my first Lego train set when for my 10th. It was either 8th, 9th, or 10th birthday. It's been so long, I can't remember. But uh, I officially joined the uh, Brick Model Road Rider team in February, along with Matt Singe and Chris Stone. And um, excited to be a part of the team and excited to talk about my uh, my boxcar model here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And we're glad that you chose this awesome boxcar to start with. And it's it, what a boxcar it is, really. It's, it, I've seen, I don't have one in, for myself yet, but I've seen one like held it in person and it is a massive massive car yeah it's it's a lot bigger than you think i mean it's just uh i mean that's that's really what got me interested in this model i wanted to do um you know i've done so many diesel locomotives and stuff and i really needed to expand my freight collection so i started looking at box cars online and i wanted to do um you know a, a taller high cube box car or something maybe a little bit longer and um I was really intrigued by the uh, the ribbing alongside this box car, and that's ultimately we got what got me um, hooked on this box car and, and led me to uh, try and model it. And so here we are. There you go. It turned out really nicely. Thanks. So this is a um, officially called the Gunderson Greenbrier, I guess, plate F, which is plate F is the, uh, the plate uh, the denotation on. Or notation on a rail car is the clearance deals with the clearances of the rail car, like and along the right of way, which is an interesting fact. But um, it officially, it's the plate F 60 foot high cube box car, high cube meaning extended height. Um, yep, absolutely. Uh, like you said, yeah, the plate F is essentially they have uh, a number of plates plate C, plate E, plate, mm -hmm. plate F, um, and those are essentially just standard cross sections that a car can fit within or is. Um, outside of that cross section, like you'll see on a lot of freight cars, it says exceeds plate F, which means it's obviously bigger than the standard plate F cross section. So this this particular model right here uh, fits within the plate F cross section. There you go. And like I said, it's a, a Gunderson 60 foot box car, about 60 foot long, or that's the interior dimension. So it's actually I think like 61 foot nine inches long altogether. But yeah, close enough. So 60 foot is what we're gonna go with. <laughs> there you go. I guess for reference, the uh, the bulkhead flat car that we have is actually a plate C car. So mm -hmm. I guess we could put them right next to each other if you had one, and you know you could tell a little bit of the difference just that translates down into the scale modeling part of it. Yeah, I need to get me one of those. I think uh, when we were at um, Brick Fair Virginia last year, we ran those back to back behind my uh, Santa Fe GP38. I had a CP rail 60 foot box car, and we had your 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 bulkhead, and it, they uh, they look really good next to each other. They so. matched well together, didn't they? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's cool. We need to, uh, when everything opens back up, we'll need to get back to a convention, of course. Yeah, really looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this morning actually was when uh, Brick Fair or uh, Brick World this year, Brick World yep. Chicago was. You're right. Off. Oh, you're I right. Was, uh, it broke my heart getting that notification on uh, Facebook that. Yeah, me too. Start today. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Was there any other, any other of the the history or the details about the real car that you want to go over before going into the model more? Yeah, so there's there's really not as much history behind this car as most of the other BMR cars. Most of the other BMR cars are much uh, come much earlier than this car. Um, Gunderson they started manufacturing this car in 1979, I believe, um, in Portland, Oregon, actually, mm. and. Uh, They've uh, tweaked the design from year to year, but uh, the overall look has pretty much stayed the same. I don't think you could tell uh, the difference in between one of the newer Gunderson boxcars versus the ones from 1979. So um, that's uh, that's about it. Yeah, there's, I'm sure there's a very small, if any, if any changes. Uh, I'm sure there's probably like some more modern like components like draft gear and bearings, but I'm sure overall the body of the car was probably almost identical to one built back in the back in the day. Exactly. The the body, like you said, has stayed the same. Um, yeah, bearings have probably changed from year to year along with trucks. Um, we've got the, speaking of uh, bearings, we've got these nice blue bearing, uh, oh, yeah. blue bearing caps, I guess you would call them, um, courtesy of Richard Gladder at Brick Print Studios. 
Um, I can't remember exactly what the difference is. Um, maybe you can speak to that, the, uh, the blue bearing caps and the purpose that they serve. Uh, to my knowledge, the blue is just the, uh, what one company paints them in. Um, just the one, one company that manufactures the side bearings, not side bearings, but the roller bearings for, for mm -hmm. modern freight car trucks. Um, to my knowledge, they just use a blue end cap. Um, and that's really it, but the um, other differences in roller, or roller bearings for freight cars and that is just um, size, uh, dimensional sizes, and then um, load restrictions as well. But they're, all in all, they're, we just model them with the one by one round tiles that we print on them. And um, I should note that we will include eight of those in the box. So you'll get uh, yeah. enough of those to build one car and we'll have them available separately. Uh, online as well, and they, yeah, that's they, they're really cool detail. It looks like yeah, a neat little feature. It's a neat little feature. I think that really helps really helps the uh, the bearings and the wheels. I guess kind of stand out underneath the car, and that's I really wanted to include them with this model because as you'll notice, the body sits so low on top of the truck that it's got the wheels kind of get buried in there, and so I wanted something cool to help the uh, help the wheels and the bearings kind of stand out a bit, and I think the. Uh, the prototypical blue bearing caps are, are the right way to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. So I guess we're, we're now into the details about the model. So you have to explain the overall construction of the car. <laughs> so it's a, uh, I've had a lot of people ask about that. And I know when, when Matt and Chris were looking over this model, kind of reviewing the instructions book, looking for errors and things like that, um, they, they all made comments about how this thing is constructed. and. Uh, it's actually really strange. You'll see the, uh, it's hard to tell, but uh, the bottom of the car is actually constructed upside down. This car isn't exactly built like most uh, Lego train models, I guess. So the bottom of the car is upside down. And then obviously the top of the car is right side up. And then uh, you'll see all pretty much, I mean, aside from the doors, the entire side of the car is built using snot techniques and these these obviously these doors face studs outward mm -hmm. so it's essentially it's kind of like the studs are facing outward in all directions on yeah, this it, model it's an absolutely insane uh, <laughs> technique and there's another box car that you built and i won't mention what it is because we're not we're not 100 percent sure of it yet but it's it's that times about 50 and it's, <laughs> and it's it oh I, I can't even fathom the the engineering that went into the, the internals of that one, but even this still is just an, an incredible technique. And even you showed it, you showed the underside a little bit. You have to turn it upside down again and show the trucks. The trucks are actually also built upside down on this particular car. So yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if you can see that oh, there, yeah, but you'll you can, see, yep. the, uh, you see the bearing bricks. You'll see the one by two uh, Technic bricks that hold the bearings. Those are actually upside down. So the yep. entire uh, the entire truck assembly is constructed upside down as well, along with all of the uh, the under undercarriage detailing here, your brake rod hangers and things like that. But yep. uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really unique. And, and one of the advantages to constructing it upside down, constructing the trucks upside down at least, is that it allowed me to get the top of the wheels, the top of the flange essentially, as close to the bottom of the car as possible. I think there's 0 0.4 millimeters in between the bottom of the car and the top of the top of the wheel there so it's a it's a little bit more prototypical look a i guess really neat bonus for that yeah. <laughs> oh my word because that's look at i've seen photos of the real uh of those of those real cars and they they really do ride low on those trucks yep it, it's, yep that's that's something that uh it's really tough to do that in lego to capture that prototypical look because if you i mean obviously if you try and sink the body of the car down around the sides of the, the wheels, I guess, or around the trucks like you see on, on most of these models, that obviously makes it very difficult for the trucks to then pivot and take the tight, tight radius uh, Lego curves. Exactly. Um, yep. Really tough to do in Lego. It's a cool technique, though, and it turned out well, and it, it suits the car well, because I can... It looks just so prototypic. Like, if, if I was one of those those guys who just didn't know any better and would find that model at a train show, I would just instantly think it was an O-Gage IQ box. <laughs> like, I appreciate that. I appreciate the kind of words. That's, uh, that's the look I was going for. Uh, you, <laughs> you definitely got it. It's uh, it's quite a car. Uh, any other details you want to go over? Um, I'm really proud of the doors, I guess. Yeah. I spent a lot of time trying to design those. But, uh, yeah, those are neat. 
And this, this actually, this is probably the third or fourth rendition of this car that I've actually done. I mean, I, I built my first uh, Gunderson 60 foot box car back in 2017. I think it was actually June of 2017, about, about three years ago. Yeah, about yep. about three years ago. And then, um, so there's there's a few uh, minor differences in between my original model and this one. Um, one of them being I pushed, pushed the doors outward, I guess, by a half a plate to help them stand out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I really think builders will enjoy the, uh, the detailing on the doors. And of course, uh, the decals, man, we, we're going to offer, I think, eight different sets of decals oh, for this particular correct. model. Yeah, I think I think you've got the uh, the decal sheet I up do. there on, we can, on your uh, screen. Maybe you can go over those a bit. Well, I have them on my phone, but um, <laughs> they'll all they all they'll of course all, all be available for viewing uh, online when the box car is ready for sale. Um, but to go through the decals real quick, we have um, three reddish brown cars. Those uh, include Union Pacific, uh, Norfolk Southern, and Canadian National. Uh, all those look really good. Um, well, all eight of them look really good. Um, if you want something a little bit more colorful, we have a yellow TTX uh, T-Box set of decals for it, which look really cool. I'm not a modern railroader by or by any means, but I kind of have a soft spot for TTX, truth be told. Um, beyond that, we've got the uh, dark red car for, with for BNSF decals right there, right there that Aaron's got in front of him. Um, dark red's always fun to work with and really eye-catching. Um, then for regular, a little pricey, yeah, a little it, pricey, it, it but uh, def pricey. definitely eye-catching. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not wrong there. Um, uh, for red, a regular red car, we have a Canadian Pacific. Uh, if you live in uh, Grand Ole Canada, that would be a good car to have. Um, and then lastly, the, the, the final two, we have a dark red car labeled for OK Brickworks, which is our, our decal supplier. And we also have a blue and white brick model railroad or box car, which apparently we have to make a brick model railroad or set of decals for every box car we do now. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not complaining. It turned out really good. Um, Kale went the extra mile on that set of decals to try and make them look, you know, as eye-catching and as realistic as possible for you know a more modern rendition of what a brick model railroad or box car would look like in real life and uh, he did a really good job on them and the all, all eight of them too they just look really really cool so yeah the uh, the brick model railroader uh, design I mean I love how Kale implemented the white doors on that car it's got a blue yeah. body and then white doors so the white doors really really kind of pop really yeah. stand out of course the uh, the BMR logo looks really good on it too yeah there's a, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, you might need a little bit more patience with the BMR ones, especially putting all of the decals over the ribbing on the cars, because the ribbing sticks out from the rest of the body by, what, like half a stud or something like that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a little painstaking, but uh, definitely worth it in the end if you, uh, if you go for something like that. There's a couple of other decal sheets that are similar, but it's a big car, needs a lot of decals. The end effect is worth it, but... I think that uh, I think that covers all of the information that we have for the car. Then, yeah, I think that was about it. Uh, I think we awesome. pretty much pretty well pretty well got it all. Um, like you said, yeah, the uh, the ribbing obviously makes it tough to uh, to do the decals, but uh, like you also just said, it's uh, I think it's worth it in the end to uh, take your time with that. And the decal sheets are set up to where the uh, each individual rib is is separate from the the main body panels, so. Try to make it as easy as possible for anyone who does who does decal their cars, um, but it is you know of course it is a little challenging, um, but I did say it's worth it and I definitely think it is. Um, but that covers all the information that we have for this box car. Um, there'll be a bit, uh, the premium instructions for this box car will be available on the brand new brick model railroad or shop, which will be linked in the description of this video. Um, they'll be available starting. Uh, Friday, June 19th at around uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and this will be a regular premium instructions uh, product for, for us. That one's not a special edition, not a limit, not a limited run. It will just be a regular product to have in our store, and we'll make as many as we can, uh, as many as people want. So uh, with that, Aaron, thank you for joining me for the first time, and thank you for this awesome 60-foot uh, high cube box car. Uh, the first model of many from him. I'm, I know that he's got a, a couple more in mind already, and you know, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing a lot more 
come come uh, come from North Florida, of course. <laughs> but, uh, Central Florida, actually. Central Florida. Ah, I'm sorry. Thank yep. North And Florida. hopefully, uh, big, <laughs> big thanks to Scott Meyer for the or Scott Hoffmeyer for the uh, the wheels. That was the big oh, holdup. Yeah. The number of uh, a number of BMR uh, freight models that we have coming out. So, uh, mm. like. like now that we've got those, um, we should be able to start cranking them out now. Absolutely. We're, it, it's been a long time coming on those parts, and uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the other videos, but um, our, our premium instructions products going forward from this point on will include the brick tracks wheels, which are essentially a replacement for the wheels that we have been using in our ball bearing wheel sets. Um, LEGO recently decided to change the design of the wheel, of that style wheel for that style wheel holder on their uh, official sets and so we kind of had to or we I say we but I mean Scott at Brick Tracks had to step up and make a, a suitable stand in for those wheels and he did a great job um, I've got them actually on my uh, my, re my refrigerator car sitting behind me and they work fantastic I have no problems with them and they're a little bit easier to use too they're you know if you are the kind of person to buy your own wheels they're definitely easier to work with as well but those will be included on all of the Brick Model Road or Premium instructions going forward. Um, and for this particular car, we'll also include the uh, printed blue bearing cap tiles as well enough to build one car and have them available separately uh, on our new online store. Um, I, think that, I think that's everything now. Um, Aaron, once again, thank you for joining me uh, tonight or today. And thank you everyone for watching and we'll talk to you all later. Yep, thanks for having me. Absolutely.